Kia ora. my name is Glenn Vickery, welcome to my YouTube channel Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival and today uh, I thought I would do some reloading of um, 308 hunting rounds um, so I've got here prepared um, cases uh, Norma 308 uh, or 30 caliber uh, they've all been um, deprimed, cleaned and lubed then resized okay and then they've all been checked all right so uh, we're going to be reloading these these have been reloaded uh, twice already um, so they're still good they've also been checked for uh, length okay so that's what we're going to be doing so the uh, first thing we'll do is I'll go through the process of what I do um, using the uh, Dillon 550B um, reloader and um, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so the uh, first thing I've done here is I've um, loaded up the uh, powder feeder. All right, and that's just a matter of um, taking the lid off here at the top. Okay, plonking your uh, funnel in the top. All right, and filling her up with the well, I'm using AR2208 um, ADI. Okay, is the powder name ADI. All right. Uh, it's a smokeless powder and um, it works very well okay um, so what I normally do is I keep this behind the uh, Dillon just so that I know exactly what powder has gone into it and I normally leave the funnel sitting on the top okay so the second thing I do is I want to get uh, the uh, large rifle primers that you can see here okay I'm using CCI they're one of the uh, best ones that you can use um, and you want to have your well I've got in this case a Dillon um, uh, primer tray all right this is a Dillon primer tray very good nice solid metal last a lifetime okay and what we want to do because we're doing 33 cases all right or 33 cartridges um, We want to get the side that has all the grooves on it. If you can see the grooves there. Okay, this one has the grooves on it. And the other one, the lid, doesn't have any grooves on it. Okay, it's just um, uh, smooth. Alright. So, we want the one of the grooves. And what I like to do is pull out... These are in rows of... Uh, if you can see that... Uh, these are in rows of uh, 10 okay so that's 30 there all right I need 30 so well, well I need 33 but I want these 30 so I'll chuck these onto here all right. so what I normally do here is plonk those on like that flip them over all right like so and take those off all right and there's the uh, you can see the 30 empty ones there now okay it's a lot faster all right that's 30 there. Put those to the side and I'll grab my other one. And this one's got um, just a few that are left over in here. And I want uh, only uh, three of these. Okay. So I'll get those and I will just tip them into there. Okay. So I've just taken the top three. Um, primers out all right all righty so now that we should have our 33 uh, primers in here okay what we can do is we just get our lid the smooth lid plonk that onto the top make sure it's on properly okay move it around You can do it like this as well without the lid on. Okay, so there, place the lid on, flip it over. Okay, and she should all be silver side up. 
Okay, so the, you can see silver side up. You can place the base to one side. And for 308, this is our uh, primer tube. We're using the, because uh, 308 is a large primer, we're using the green uh, tip. Okay, if you're using small primers, you'd be using, I believe it's the yellow, yellow tip. Okay, that comes with the package. So we do here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So what I'm doing is I'm counting them because even though I know how many is in there, I'm constantly double checking. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33 for our 33 cases or brass. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You can see the tip there's one in there all right and so that's um the bottom of the uh, primer all right so the next thing we do is we're going to feed this into the um primer tube okay so, okay, so the second. next step is we want to get our um primer picker picker up a tube or whatever you want to call it okay and we want to lift this lid here off we want to take this rod out Okay, this black rod. Okay, we took this out, and we want to flip this here over. All right, so it's like clear side up uh, at the bottom now, and the green tip at the top. Okay, and of course this has got a little uh, pin in it. All right, to hold all the primers in place. So we hold that in place like so. And what I like to do is get this rod and place it right at the top. So this is going to go right at the top in where the primers were picked up. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just bring this up a bit, see if you can see it. Alright, hopefully you can see that see me waving it around. There's the plastic thing in the top there. Alright. And as I pull this uh, metal pin out, all the primers will feed down the tube, okay, and into this metal tube here, all right? So from this aluminium tube into this metal tube, all right, and the um, rod here, follower rod, will follow them all down and make sure they all go down. All right, so here we go, pull it out, and you should hear them drop down. All right, there they go there, and here's our... Um, rod here has gone down as well. Okay, what I'll do now? Here's the rod. You can see it's gone, gone, it's gone down like so. All right, and obviously at the bottom, that rod came down and pushed them all through. All right. So now, what we want to do is um, we want to put this, put the lid of the uh, um the top of the primer here lid on there that's for an alarm okay and that alarm will go off when there's about probably about five five cases left to go okay when there's five basically when there's five primers should I say left in this metal tube okay and this black rod goat just sits on the top there so that's just sitting on top of the last primer okay um, and it'll slowly just push them down. Just give a little bit of it'll give a little bit of weight to push push them down. This um, black rod. Okay. Then I, what I want to do is I want to get this little pin here that you can see that I pulled out. All right. Take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing because it gets quite hot and sweaty. And it's got a little. It's got a little, um, when you put the pin in, 
it's got a little hole there all right and you should be able to there's another hole on the other side okay there's another hole on the other side where the pin feeds through to okay and then it should just clip into place in the um, in the middle hopefully you can sort of see that spin it around a bit okay so now that that's done okay this um, can go be put away safely and so can the primers okay uh, which I've already done and also the uh, primer tray that can go away so anything you've used you want to put it back put it away okay so it's not getting in your way and um, you're not you're not leaving things out and making a mess okay you need to keep things nice and tidy as you go all right so I'll just put this away and then we'll carry on to the next stage okay so the next thing I do is I want to get one case all right that's um, obviously you can see that it's got no primer in there all right you can see there's a uh, hole in the middle all right goes right through there's no primer in there at the moment so as I said I've already deprimed this um, it's been cleaned it's been resized okay so I've resized it um, and uh, now I'm going when it went before it was resized it was also lubed okay now I double up I double up a lot of my things um, uh, just to make sure that things are done sometimes um, and it's just the process that I do it in okay um, so what I'm going to do here is I just need the one case at the moment so I'm just going to get a little bit of just a tad of lube because whenever I put um, cases through my Dillon um, I lube my cases now um, with a Dillon you don't really need to um, but I find that uh, because they're not supposed to get stuck up the, 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 the brass case is not supposed to get stuck in the first um, point here all right but but they do okay in the first die but they do all right um, so I like to make sure that I oil mine now I only need one case for this moment at the stage right so what I want to do is even though this has been slide that into the first point there even though this has been resized I'm going to resize it again the little pin up here will deprime it's already deprimed, but it doesn't matter. I'm just doubling up to make sure that the the brass is um, is resized. In case at some stage you go wrong, um, you, you're doubling up to make sure it's done. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do here is, as I pull down the handle, the case here will go up. All right, it's resizing, even though it's sized anyway. I go to the full extension of the arm down. I come back up all right and then from here I want to push the lever forward slightly and that will push a primer a new primer that's in this tube up and into the um, case all right the brass case so let's do that now all right I like to push it right forward okay so you can hear that click pull it back let's pull it out and check it and you can see here that we've got now our uh, primer is in the case there all right new primer okay um, now obviously this oil we don't want it to get the the the, the, uh, the grease here or whatever okay oil we don't want it to get into the case all right because that's where our we don't want it to get in the case because that's where our uh, powder is going to go and we don't want it all over our primer okay so whenever we put our lube and that on okay we just want it on the outside of the uh, case okay so the reason why I've only done I only do one case is so the next step is I move I'm going to move this case over to the second point okay which is for the powder all right and we're going to double check the powder measure we'll do a few uh, checks on the powder to make sure that the powder is running at the, um, uh, the the right amount of powder that we want okay we always should double check double check double 
double check, triple check, quadruple check. Okay, and then check again if you want to. Okay, you never can never check too many times when you're doing this type of stuff. Anyway, so let's um let's move into the next part. Okay, so let's carry on with that next part. All right. So what all I've done? Grab the rag, give my hands a clean, and give your hands a clean with a, a, a rag every now and again because you don't want too much of that lube all over your hands. Okay, um, we want to minimise that. Um, however. The next thing we want to do is you can see this little pin here, okay, and this is in the powder measure, um, the powder part where the powder gets uh, loaded into your cartridge or the charge, okay. So we want to take that little um, bronze pin out, right, so I'm just going to reach over here and take that out, right, so here's our bronze pin, right, let's see the little pin there, I don't know if it's bronze or not, but whatever, okay, so here's our pin. I want to take that out for now, because otherwise it's just going to get in our way. I normally throw it into a uh, container, keep it in the same container. Try to do things the same every time, and that way you won't forget how to do things. So the next thing we want to do is we want to rotate the, um, the spindle here and bring our case that we resized okay and put a primer into it over to here okay into just underneath the uh, powder all right so here's the powder all right just above us all right there's the powder all right powder comes down all right down 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 and into our case here all right Come back a little bit. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to pull our lever down again. Come back a little bit further, actually, so you can see where the lever is. We pull our lever down again so that this case is going to go up and get some powder into it. All right. Now pull it down, all the way down. Okay. And then we come back all the way up, all right. And now when I push the lever forward this time, I haven't put a case in the first one as yet, and I'm not going to do that yet, another brass case. But I'm going to push the lever forward a little bit more, and that's going to recharge or set more powder up in. That's going to set more powder up in this part here. Okay, it's going to come drop from out of here and into here. Right, so I'm going to do that, do that now, push it forward, release. Okay, so the reason why we took that little brass pin out is so that now we can pull this case out, this brass case, which has got powder in it, okay, we can pull that out because that little brass pin was stopping this from coming out. So we've taken that away, All right, and the next thing we want to do is we want to check our powder um the the uh how much powder is in here it's dropping but before we do that what i normally do is i normally dump this back into the top of the powder okay i'll come back see if we can come up a bit all right so you can see all right i normally get this first one take the lid off Put the funnel on, dump it back in. Alright, dump it back in. Put this back on, bring this up. That's loading the powder that's in here at the moment into the case. Alright, into the brass case. I come back, I push the handle forward slightly, and that fills this up again with powder all right and then I release now I'm going to dump this back into here just to make sure that we're getting through you know filling this up and getting the right amount all right saves us a little bit of time one more time pull it up okay dumps the powder into the uh, brass case push it back up reset this here for more powder to go in for the next one and release all right now what we're going to do 
is I like at the moment I'm using digital scales and um, well digital scales are all right um, I mean don't get me wrong they're accurate um, I've just got these little ones um, I don't know what the actual name is for these ones but you can see them online um, they I think there's an, it starts with F Frankfurt or something like that but I, when I got these ones it was a different name but they changed the names of things okay so I'm not sure if you can see that very clear alright so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to turn this here on okay it's currently in grains alright as you can see there I don't know if you can see that it's currently in grains which you see the uh, GN down the bottom there all right, that's what we want. We want it in grains. Okay, I'll turn that off for a second. Now, if I put this here on, this here plastic thing, it's going to give me a number, 146.4. Now, I want to get rid of that because I don't want to be measuring the size of this. So we press tar, and that zeroes, the, um, zeroes it. Okay, hopefully I can try and get in closer so you can actually uh, see the numbers. Hopefully you can see the numbers there. Alright, so the next thing we want to do, I've closed the garage door down a bit so we don't get too much wind, because the wind can actually affect this, that's how sensitive it is. Now what we want to do now is um, drop the powder in here. Alright, and the last time I had this set up, it was set for 45 grains. Alright, so now this case that we just emptied out, alright, I can put that back into the Dillon, alright, um, there we go, just come back up here a bit, uh, where are we, uh, alright, so I can put this back in to here, alright, let's make sure we slide it in properly, alright, so I'm going to put that back in, alright, that's the one with the primer, the reason why we've got a primer in that is so that we have to have a primer in the bottom, otherwise the, the, the when we put the powder in, the powder will all come out, or fall out the bottom. Okay, so we have to have a primer. That's why I've just done the one for now, um, to get all this sorted. Alright, so I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm double checking my um, powder measure, or the powder drop. Alright, I'll just bring this back so I can find out where we are. Down here. Try and get this in a little bit closer actually. Down here. Okay, so that's gone out. Never mind. Okay, the thing with these uh, digital scales is that they do go out over time. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, we've seen that that was 45 grains. Hopefully you've seen that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump this back into the top yellow funnel where you've seen earlier. I'm going to dump this back into the yellow funnel where it goes back into the powder. Okay, and all we're doing at the moment, I'll turn this back on. It'll zero out with that on if you put it on straight away. Okay, you can see it's zeroed out. All right, and now I'm going to pull down on the lever, grab another load of powder, push the arm back up, push it right to the back to reload the neck for the next cartridge or case, should I say? All right, I've got the new one here with powder in it, and what I'm going to do is just carefully drop it in. Now the wind can grab this. Um, powder so you want to be very careful all right okay give this a bit of a move this um, thing around and boom we're back on 45 again okay so you can tell that the uh, Dylan is quite accurate but let's do it a third time just I like to do things three times in a row just to make sure that everything's all good okay you can see that zeroed back I put the case here back into the Dylan Drop a powder load into the case, push it fully forward to reload the powder for the next case, bring the powder over, drop it into our thing here, very careful not to drop it anywhere else, and yeah you don't want to really win the area when you're doing this here, okay, okay, let's um, just spread this out so it's nice and even. And then we have 45 grains of powder again. 
okay so um, as you can see the Dillon is very accurate if you set it up correctly um, if you're having problems with yours with the powder uh, getting the getting a good drop like that um, you know mention something on my um, um, YouTube channel okay and um, I will uh, do a video on how to get consistent drops like this okay it's, it's vital um, so that you don't have to keep like using a uh, a trickler you know powder trickler uh, see this one here uh, you don't have to RCB what is it RCBS trickler you don't have to use a trickler or anything like that now once we've got our 50 all right 45 yeah it's close enough all right that's very close all right anyway point two out if it's but that's actually still if we see the thing it see 45 all right not a problem so now what I want to do now is I don't need to re dump another load in what I can do now is just use the funnel okay and what I want to do I'll just bring this back a little bit okay what I want to do now is you, you will definitely want to get one of these little funnels here okay for uh, 30 caliber right, they're only about 10 bucks something like that and get the case plonk that on the top okay and you get your powder here alright um, and hmm you know what that's pretty much it for that one that's pretty much it we're, we're actually gonna I'm just gonna dump this back in the top actually okay I'm just gonna dump it in the top okay so let's plonk that down you can turn this off um, and now I'm going to put this here back into where the powder part was okay and I am going to get the little uh, brass pin and I'm going to put that where I got that from okay so let's go back up to here um, all right let's see what's there. okay so I'm going to put this brass pin back to where it came came from all right which is over here just below the uh, thing so you can take these brass pins out if you want to keep pulling something out and testing things um, and that's the good thing about the Dillon you can actually test each round so if you're doing um, you know uh, long range shooting and you really want that accuracy you can pull each round check each round check the cut uh, the, the amount of powder drop for each one okay so um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to the next step okay so uh, I'm just going to put this lid this lid here back on okay back onto the uh, back onto the uh, powder holder whatever you want to call them and we're going to go into the next part which is we're going to start uh, loading up all of the rounds now okay so what do we want to do let's move some things out of the way and what I like to do is <clears throat> as I said before I put any um, cases into the uh, reloader okay into the Dillon I like to make sure that they're all lubed okay so that none of them get none of these cases get stuck okay in the Dillon all right because that's the last thing you want it's just gonna just be really thing and it's lube is like inexpensive right you can just it's inexpensive you know your machines worth a lot more and you want to take care of it you want it to last so first thing we want to do is lube all these up all right so just spread a bit of lube on here um, and uh, okay. all right what I like to do is get about five of these at a time okay put them all together okay 
and I do it in this tray here so I don't have things falling on the floor all the time okay and just move them like that across the thing here again we don't want to be getting lube in the case and definitely we don't want to be getting lube um, in where the primer pocket is where the primers are going to go right just needs a little bit of a roll chuck them into a different thing so that you're not getting them all mixed up doesn't take long to do this, it's well worth doing okay, let's give them a bit of a roll doesn't take long, chuck them in you can see this line them all up give them a bit of a roll Okay, some people take the risk and don't do this um, and they question it whether you should do it or not and um, my philosophy is uh, safe than sorry safe than sorry doesn't take long and it's it's just not worth the hassles if you damage something on your equipment and also there's peace of mind knowing that you're doing it, in my opinion, properly. Okay, next slot. All right, so we should have 32 cases here because we've got one up in the Dillon that's already been primed okay got the new primer in it okay here we go and all that's done doesn't take long all right probably took about not even a minute okay the next thing we're going to do is uh i'm going to dry my hands a little bit all right and we're going to go around to the other side and we're going to um well hang on I'll just pause there for okay, a second. So the next thing we're going to do is we'll go back to the first position. Okay, so we've got the, if you can see where my finger is here, okay, we've got the uh, the first case that we did that we were using to, we put the primer in it and then we we're using it to like do the measuring, powder measuring. That's still in number two spot. Okay, now I'm going to put a new case, all right, from out of all the ones we just lubed. I'm going to slide that down. Let's try and get it so you can see, all right, and we push that in, the spr little spring here will hold it in place, so you want to adjust that spring, so it can hold the this um, brass case in place, without getting jammed up on anything else, okay, so you just got to tattoo around with it, get it the right place, and tighten it up, okay, so let's go again, so as I said, what I like to do, is I like to, even though these have been resized, I'm going to resize it, um, the D primer here um, will push through, but there's no old primer in there. I've already D primed. Um, as I go up, that's what it's going to be doing. It's going to be resizing this first case, D priming if there was an old primer in there. The um, case that's uh, on the other side of number two, all right, slot number two, that's going to get a dump of uh, a charge of uh, powder, which should be. As we've checked already, 45 grains. Can I trust it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, let's go down. Press the handle down. Okay. That second one's getting the powder dumped into it now. The first one's getting resized and deprimed. Okay, it's already deprimed though, so we don't need to worry about that. If it was, the, the primer would fall down into here when we come back down. Okay. Let's go back bring the handle back up, okay, I want to go forward, that's re-put a new primer into this case in part, um, place one, and it's also put a new lot of powder ready to be dumped into the next case, alright, and I release, simple as that, alright, the next thing I do, I can move this around to the next um, thing, 
all right so what we did was move it around with our hand put the next lubed case into the place one or point one now we've got three cases in there we've got our new one we've got our second case that's going to get um, powder put into it okay and we've got our third case over here and what we're going to do there is we're going to put a bullet in okay so here's our bullet all right this is a hunting bullet 165 grain um, you know uh, um, ballistic tip on the end of it all right plastic well whatever yeah ballistic tip okay um, so we're going to put that on the top there okay and we simply Oh, also that second one where the second one where the the funnel comes down to put the powder in, <clears throat> that can also um, bell your um, case. What does I mean by bell? What do I mean by bell? What do I mean by bell? It means that this part here, the opening where the where the bullet sits in, it can open it up a little bit to make the bullet sit in there better. Okay. Um, in the case what we're using here, we're using a um, um, what we call a boat tail bullet, it's like um, curved in at the end, so it'll fit into the uh, case nicely anyway without being belled. All right, so that's that's not a problem for us. So we want to get this third one. We want to place that into. Can you see that? Let's see if you can see that. All right, so here's the bullet. We place it into the third one. Okay. We pull down on the handle. Okay. What's that doing? We already know what it's doing on the first one. It's resizing, decapping. Second one is creating a bell. Um, and also dumping the powder into it or charging, all right, as we call it putting a charge in and the third one is pushing the bullet pushing the bullet into the case okay the third one is pushing the bullet into the brass case all right so that's fully down then we push it back up all right and we give it one little more push forward to prime this first case we want to put a new primer into it and we want to put some new powder up the top there some new powder for this next case, all right. So push it forward, all right. You feel the primer go through in, and that would be filling up the new lot of powder. So if we check this, double check it if we wish to. If you're not sure, if you just, you know, you want to double check, you can go back to it, pull it out, and make sure that it's got the primer in it. It's not a problem. Okay, you can always check. Okay, the next thing we want to do is um, simply. Uh, turn this thing one more place all right so we turn it with our hand boom and we get it to there okay then we grab our next uh, case and one thing I also do every case I grab I check that it's got no primer on here okay no new primer okay if it's got an old primer that's not so bad it shouldn't do because we've done all our checks earlier um, but if it did, it would make me um, send uh, signals to me that what's that doing in, with the rest of these. And the third thing is, is if it's a, it does have a primer and it's a, it's, a, it's a good primer, a new primer, we don't really want to be depriming a new primer. Okay, because it can, um, it can bl blow up. Okay, I mean it can be done, and I have done it before. Um, but it's not something that you want to do, okay? You should steer clear of anything like that, all right? Uh, safe than sorry. So we put our new one in. We grab a bullet for our one in slot three. Now the one in slot four, okay? The one in slot four now, all right, over here, that to us at the moment is a finished bullet. In slot 4 here though, you can have another die in here that will crimp that. That means that it will, it will, um, if I grab this bullet and show you. When the bullet goes in here, crimping means that this part around the top here, oh, you can see, this part around the top here, it will 
crimp it in like it'll 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 crush the top of this brass here it'll uh, crunch it in a bit around so it, so it grabs hold of this bullet that's sitting in there a little bit better so you don't want to grab it too hard because when it flies it's going to create too much um, pressure all right um, and things like that whereas I've got it where I've got no crimping I'm not crimping it at all period uh, the, the actual uh, amount of pressure that's on that bullet when I put it in for 308 is fine okay we don't need to worry about it okay so let's carry on good to know though all right so in this case this is going to do nothing on my die here on my setup okay the next thing we do I'm just going to dry my hands all right you don't want to get um, oil all over your bullets and stuff like that okay all right let's carry on put that into number three bay Because I was talking, I forgot what I was doing. I'm just going to check this. This shouldn't have a... Um, yeah, it's got no primer in it. That's good. Right, if you lose track, just double check. It never hurts. All right, so let's carry on. We'll pull it down. Let's go again. Resize. Deprime. Uh, bell the case. Drop a powder load into the case. The other one's pushing the bullet into the case. And the fourth one there, it's doing nothing. You can see it pointing out at the top. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Just over here, the bullet is pointing out at the top. Maybe you can't see that. It come up a little bit. All right, over here, you can see where my finger is, the bullet is pointing out at the top. Okay, it's not actually doing anything. All right. Okay, and then we bring it back up. Okay, and I want to push it forward to prime this one and load our powder for the next bullet. Push it all the way forward and release. Okay, and always make sure you do that regardless. Okay, and you can't go wrong. Next thing we do is we just carry on. That's all four cycles done. And we carry on, turn it, and the bullet will fall in to our case. All right, all right, there is our finished bullet. All right, finished bullet. It's got the bullet in there. The case is all good. It's still got a bit of lube, the lube on it. It's got our primer in there. This is the first one we did. Okay, all good, all done. All right, now all we've got to do is carry on this cycle, okay, of doing what we're doing there. And then once we've got all our bullets, we'll dry them off and we'll check them. Okay, check the sizes. So, right. so let's carry on a little bit faster now. Put a new case in. Put a new bullet in. We go up. Push it all the way down. Bring it up. Push it forward. Release. Turn. New case in. new bullet in, bring it up, push it all the way down, bring it up, push it all the way forward, okay, I push it forward, hold, release, okay, turn, new case, new bullet, pull it all the way down, Okay, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses while you're doing all this as well. Okay, pull it up, push it forward, release. Turn it. Grab a new case, slide it in. Grab another bullet, drop that in. Oh, okay, what can I feel there? Okay, this bullet here, I can just feel on this bullet, there's a... Um, it's been uh, it's 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 been stripped a bit. Okay, one of these bullets has got got a got a strip on it. I'll show you that later. All right. So as you're doing things, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a 
there's a, there's a part on there where it's got like a I don't know it's 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 a little part of uh, the copper that is um, sticking out. All right, I might have to file that off very carefully. Okay, that will affect the projectile. Okay, that will affect the ballistic of the bullet. All right, and it may not hit where you want it to hit, and that is quite serious as far as accuracy goes. Okay, anyway, we'll put that one to the side and we'll carry on. Place the bullet in. All the way down. On the handle. All the way up. And push it forward. Hold. Release. Now, the key with this is there's no hurry. Okay? Some people I've seen on the internet doing this. And it's a race to them. They're trying to race it and they make mistakes okay there is no race when you're doing this sort of stuff just take your time and enjoy it okay okay you'll see it just hang on a second what do we got we've got this is this primer feed tray here has been playing up on me every now and again lately yeah going on here oh that part there I see okay so what was happening there I've been having a bit of a trouble with this earlier and I've been trying to figure this out and what I've just figured out is the problem with the primer feed tray. Okay. Right, this is the primer feed tray down here. And what I've just learned is that <clears throat> this wheel, I don't know why I haven't picked this up earlier, but this white wheel here, what it's doing is it's, it's getting caught behind this part. This, this middle part here. It, because this wheel can move backwards and forwards, and it... And, and when it, this comes all the way back and it's coming back forward, it's grabbing on that. Okay, so this wheel needs something in between it, like some washers or something, just to keep it where it currently is, away from dropping in there. I was wondering what was doing it. Okay, so that's good. You figure one thing out at a time and you're all good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... We were coming forward. This here hasn't been primed yet. I'm double check because that if anything gets in your way with anything, so that hasn't been primed yet, so that's okay. We haven't pushed it forward. Alright, we just got to this part. So that was alright. We'd come down far enough. Okay, everything else seems all good. I can double check. I could double check the powder here if I wanted to, in fact I think I will based on that. Okay, that's the good thing about this here, you can double check everything. So I'm going to pull the bronze pins out, bronze pull, pin out, on the powder measure aside, put that in my blue tray. Okay, I'm going to turn on my um, uh, scales I'm going to press tar and zero it I am going to get pull out this one with the powder in I'm going to check it okay I'm going to check it put that back into there alright I'm going to give it a bit of a move to like even this out and we're sitting on forty-five. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Alright, let's bring this over. Still sitting on forty-five. Yep. 
where are we? Yeah. Sorry about that, I pressed pause by accident. Okay, so we're still sitting on 45 grains, okay, which is all good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, again, just grab me funnel here, come back, grab me funnel here, right, and dump this back in. Right, these funnels here, okay, this little red one here are priceless. Okay, absolutely priceless. Okay, so let's put this back in. So I'm happy with that. That means the powder charge went completely in, which means we took the um, lever right down. Okay, because I you get a bit mixed up sometimes. I'm going to grab my bronze pin. I'm going to put it back in. Okay, and we carry on. Now, the good thing about this is that if at any time you decide that you want to, you know, stop, double check your powder to make sure it's still dropping the uh, correct amount and everything else, you can, okay? There's actually no problem with doing that, okay? There's actually no problem at all with doing that sort of thing. So that's that's always a good thing. Nothing wrong with stopping and checking. Okay, so we've gone up. Now all I've got to do now is push forward, okay, to reprime and dump a new load in for the uh, powder. Push it forward. You can hear that click for the prime. Release. Okay, turn it. Each time we turn it now, we're getting a new bullet completed or a new cartridge completed. Put our new bullet in. Up. Make sure my glasses are on. Okay, don't want to lose an eye. You only get two. Up. And forward. Release. Okay, it's not a race. Next one in. Next bullet in. Bring it down, and handle it down, bring it up, drive it forward, release, turn, new one. One of the main things I'm trying to keep an eye on now is this little plastic wheel here. I can't believe something so simple, that's definitely a design defect if you ask me. Unless maybe they've forgotten to put some very small um, uh, washers in there. I'll have to see if I can fit something in there to stop it from doing that. Uh, I might have to have something come off there to, to stop it from moving in. Okay, let's pull her down. Up. Forward release okay another thing little tip that you want to have is um, a chair get yourself a nice comfortable chair okay so that you know doing all this reloading and everything else you don't you don't want to be on your feet all day doing it okay you want to be able to enjoy what you're doing where it's not becoming a uh, tedious well not a tedious job but a job okay an enjoyment okay right, so new one in new bullet guide it up pull the lever down okay now I don't know if you can see this bring this down a bit you can see this this little wheel here it's pushed in again all right so I'm gonna pull this out well actually I might not be able to if I hold this out a bit as I come in, because the pressure will come off it, okay? As I come up, all right, here, it's going to hit there. I can see it's going to hit. So I want to move that out to the side. That's bad. 
That's why my uh, Dylan push it forward, release. That's why my Dylan is jamming up on the feeder. Okay. I've seen other people's ones jamming up and they reckon it's different things but they might want to check that because that's a design flaw and not something that's just um, causing issues due to uh, wear and tear or lack of cleanliness okay so that that little wheel pushes in towards the slide okay and then it's catching over on this piece here this metal piece it's catching there all right so all the way down come forward miss that one all good here and push forward prime low down next lot of powder now making sure you push it fully forward keep it to the same distance each time when you push that forward because that's loading your next lot of powder okay if you if you don't keep that consistency there with the handle um, you know you'll get you'll get you'll get the um, different loads of powder okay you might get that. all right so what we'll do here is come down push it all the way down bring it all the way up push it forward hold release Okay, so yes, you could do this a lot faster, okay, you could do this a lot faster, um, but one thing's for sure, if I was doing this faster, I, if I was doing this faster by pulling this down real fast, the lever, and then slamming it forward real at speed, I could ease, I could have easily cracked or broken this um, plastic wheel, okay, and um, they don't give you any spares, so it's not really worth um, going hard on it. Okay, come forward, push forward, hold, release. Okay, and hopefully you can see that quite well there. And turn. Try and go a little bit faster now that I've done the explaining. Hang on, in a second. Up, push down, all the way down. Each time it should go down as far as the same amount of distance, okay? Come up and push forward. Hold, release. Turn. Next one. Okay, so I need to just open up another case of uh, bullets here. Okay, so these are the bullets I'm using actually. Uh, Nosla, or Nosla. Ballistic tip hunting, um, 30 calibre, 165 grain. Okay. Take that off. Right, next bullet. Guide it up. Pull it all the way down. Okay, up here and push forward. Release. Right. Okay, now with if you're doing like um, accuracy shooting. What you can do is, if you wanted to, you could pull each each case out from number two, and you could measure each one individually, okay? Which is what some people do, okay? Um, whereas for hunting, if you're hunting, or anything else like that, um, and you're only firing out to say, you know, maybe maximum of 300 yards to 200 yards, well give or take, um, you don't really need to be getting, you know, pulling each round off and checking the powder measure, okay, but you just don't need to be doing that, alright, 
you don't need to be doing that. Um, the accuracy will be fine with the amount of powder you're getting, and if you set it up correctly, you'll get a good consistent powder measure anyway. Okay. The other thing that I like to do once I've done all of this, because we're almost finished, is I like to weigh every single round. Which I'll show you what I what I do there. Okay, so let's go a little bit faster. New bullet. Guide it up, push it all the way down, come up, okay, push forward, turn, new case, slide it in, new bullet, place it on, okay, bring it all the way down, leave it all the way down, all the way up, all the way forward, pause, and release. Next one, new case, new bullet. Guide it up, leave it all the way down, leave it all the way up, and push forward, hold, release. Now you want to hold it and release, why do you want to hold and release? You want to give that powder enough time to drop down, okay, and store itself in the powder bar for the next, for the next round when you, when you, when you put the next, next lot of, um, powder into the next case okay it's very important drop it down push it forward push it forward and hold release turn okay Ready? so welcome back um sorry about that my camera got full okay that that um noise you can hear in the background is the um coming from the uh the alarm on the primer tube okay and basically that means that we're down to our last four or five um, cases so I thought I'd carry on once I'd lost yours but uh, we're back now I made some more space all right so let's carry on we put our uh, last case onto the um, Dylan Put our bullet in, guide it down, all the way down, all the way back up, pull it forward, prime that last case, turn it, in this case here we've got no new case to throw in so we just forget about that one, put the bullet on, Guide it up, all the way down, back up. We don't, oh, we do, we don't really need to prime. Um, we don't need to prime, and we don't need to um, load up for the next case because there is none. Okay. All we need to do now is uh, turn, okay, go back up. I mean, we can go forward, it's, it's not really going to make a difference, you know, if you wanted to. It's, it's nothing, it's not going to do anything, okay. And of course, boom, and this last one, boom, alright. And we know that it's had the last primer in there, from our 33 primers, our 33 bullets, okay. So now that's finished, we can take, take this um, bar out okay from the primer feed bar and I like to just put that in first and put the lid back on top okay so now we've got all our cases the next thing we've got to do is we just grab our cases grab our cases out okay from our tray we grab our cases from out of our tray here 
and give them a bit of a wipe down. Alright. Give them a bit of a wipe down, getting all that uh, lube off them. Okay. And then place them into a, another tray, which I've been doing um, over here. All right, placing them into another tray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to dry off um, all the lube, wipe off all the lube off these other cases, and um, I'll see you back shortly for the uh, final um, couple of things that we need to do. Okay. Okay. So welcome sure? back. So what we've done now is we've um, uh, dried off all the lube off the uh, cases, and we've got our uh, again 40, 43. I think it was. Was it five? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 33, 33 cases, okay, we can double check, I wrote it down earlier, 33 cases, so we don't have anything going missing. Next thing we want to do is, what I like to do is I'll turn the, um, turn the uh, scales on, okay, it's zeroed out on grains, now what I'll do is I'll measure, or weigh, each thing. Normally it's about, I find it's around about 377 um, 377 uh, grains, okay, give or take, 377, 378, I'll, I'll allow up to about 380 and just, you know, 376, whatever, but that tells me that it's got the charge in it, i.e. it's got the powder, right amount of powder, the weights will vary differently, don't need to get too thing with it, because the bullets themselves, um, will weigh slightly different, um, the cases may weigh slightly different, okay, so don't be too thin about it, alright, alright, so that one's okay, 380, alright, 383, it's a little bit heavier than what I would like, 380, 381.4, 380 point eight three eighty three point four three eighty two point two three eighty one so if I seen something about forty five grams um, less so if I seen something about three thirty five or something like that I would know straight away that no powder has gone into it. Okay. 382.8 381 382.8 382.8 381.4 right, 383 we'll just go for the main numbers 381 381 383 383 382 doesn't take long 383 381 381.382 382.382 382.382 382.382 382.382 382.382 381.6 basically 382 and 380.8 pretty much 381 okay so there you can see just really quickly um, I know for a fact that all of those have been charged they've got their uh, right amount of powder in there um, they're all pretty pretty damn close okay that that's that's more than satisfactory okay so that's that part done we can turn our scales off 
And the next thing I want to do is I, you want to get a, um, a thing to uh, check the size of your cases. Okay, I just have this one here. Um, uh, it was just the only one that I could find um, when I went in to purchase a, uh, a thing to ch chamber. I can't even remember what they're called. Chamber size thing where you check the uh, uh, case size case size uh, thing. Okay, so this, this is what I'm using. This is a, uh, it's not too bad actually. It's a P F FGW um, 308. Okay, that's the, the name is FGW. Is it FGW or EG? Oh, EGW. Alright, so what I do is I plonk them all in here. Alright, so your rounds should fit in here. No problem at all. Alright, they should just all fit in. All right, and they should be level. Okay, that one's a little bit sort of sticking up a little bit, tad there. All right. All right. Take we'll take those ones there out. All good. And what I'll do with this one here is I'm just going to push it out. Right, and I'm just going to put it in to another one just to see if it's that hole. Because sometimes, yeah, see. All right, so that there went in fine. It's just that that hole there plays up a little bit. It's, I don't know. Maybe I need to give it a clean out or something. All right, it just sort of sticks and it doesn't fit right down. All right, I'll probably need to get a brush in there and give it a good hack out. It's always been like that. I don't know if somebody took it back to the gun shop and I just ended up with it. Okay, so that round there is fine, no problem. And you've got to remember, they should be fine, because, you know, in my case, I'm resizing them twice. So, um, there should be absolutely no reason why they shouldn't fit. So let's go for another. I'm going to do, this does actually seven, but I'm going to do six, okay? Because that other one just seems to, it's always given me a bit of grief, that one. I've never... Alright, so there you go, they're all flush, All right, you can see they're all flush there, okay, and they stick out at the bottom, okay, all the uh, same there, so they're all fitting in fine. Alright, again, right. no problem there. Okay, next one's... Okay, they should just slide in without any problem, and they should be able to slide out without any problem. There you go. Alright. That one is sticking a little bit. Okay. See, that's going in and out. It's no problem. Right, they will stick a bit occasionally, it just depends on which hole it goes into. So it's not really the fact that it's um thing, that, that's fine. That will chamber fine, no problem at all. It's not going to give you any problems. I'll try that far one again. There it goes in fine. Again, they all fit in nicely, nice and smooth. Okay, all the same length here. Okay, you can check their lengths to make sure they're all the same length. Okay, and there's something else I do to check the lengths as well. I'll show you very shortly. This one's actually quite good when you can pump out six or seven at a time. It's a lot faster than putting them in those other ones that can only take one at a time. Alright, again, all flush. You know, that one there's sticking slightly. A couple sticking slightly there. Both on the end ones. I am going to actually get myself a single one anyway. Um, you know, Right, so if I put that into there, and that into there, you'll see that they go and fine, come out. Fine. Oh, 
block here. Alright, it's coming in. Alright, that's no problem. It's all good. All good. So there's our, again, 33. Okay, so I always check that as well. And one other thing I normally would do is I have a a case right I have a um, case here this has no powder in it and no primer and it's set at the correct length that I want so that I can fit my rounds into I know they're at the correct round correct length and I don't have to keep pulling out my digital calipers or uh, calipers which I'm actually ordered some um, other uh, manual ones on analog ones so I can check the size of these based on my um, dummy call it a dummy round I suppose all right I can check the height all right and perfect no problem at all all right so make sure that you put your dummy round the one without no primer back into your cupboard all right don't, don't get the things mixed up. Always double check. Always double check, triple check, quadruple check. You can't go wrong. That's pretty much it, team. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and I hope I've helped a few people out um, with reloading. Another thing you can do is um, I then normally will put the rounds okay, um, into another container all right one that can be completely sealed to protect your ammo the other thing I will do normally as well and I'm not is I'd normally go over and check all this I'd go through and visually check every single uh, round but I'm going to do that later I'm not going to do it now okay and all you're doing is looking for defects on the um, any any defects, okay? Anything that you think is suspect, suspicious, suspect, and you're not you're not happy with it, then you can um, um, pull the round apart. Okay, I won't won't do that today, right? But you can like, pull the round apart um, using a Magnum. Okay, I, I like this one, the Lyman um, uh, bullet puller. Okay. Bullet puller, one of the best things you could ever get, these, okay? If you ever get stuck on anything or, you know, make a mistake or whatever, you use one of those, man, and they just, you can rip the bullet apart very safely, and, um, yeah, you're good to go. All right, so what I normally do there is I put all the bullets into a thing, and I keep a piece of paper with it, and that will normally say um, what these bullets um, have on them. For example, for these ones here, because <clears throat> I had an extra one set up in there um, from earlier, that makes it 34 cases. All right, 34 cases. Um, primer, CCI primer, um, powder is uh, 2208, okay, just the AR 2208, all right. ADI with powder, okay. Um, 0 0.308, um, 165 grain uh, powder is 45 grain, um, and I've done it on the 24th of the first 2016, okay. Um, I could even say there that they um, magazine, all right? So they're, they're set at a length. I should do that for this one as well. Um, they're set at a length that they're designed to fit in the magazine of the rifle, okay? Whereas some are just, you can, sometimes I'll do some that are just designed to fit into the chamber, all right? And you feed one round at a time. Right, these fit into the uh, magazine, all right, 
all goods that closes up and of course this will be can be secured and locked away separately to any firearms okay very important locked away separately from any firearms okay and um, so that's pretty much it um, so I hope that uh, yeah I hope it's been uh, interesting um, it, I know it's a bit of a longer video but to get it all in in one shot um, you know it's probably worthwhile one other thing you can do is is, is that I will actually do I'm not going to do it on video but I'll, the, any powder that's left in the um, powder holder here um, I'll take that off and I'll tip it back into um, I'll tip that powder back into uh, its original container alright tighten it up and put it away lock it away um, alright so you, it's not safe to leave it in your machine, especially if there's kids around. Okay, it's just not safe. So put it back into the powder container it came from and lock it away. Pack all your stuff away, keep it all nice and clean and tidy the area, and you're done. Alright, so um, hunting ammo. Uh, yeah. Alright, so um, share, like, subscribe, and um, any questions, let me know. And uh, I'll, I always uh, answer all questions. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for coming along. Bye-bye.